What up, you guys? My name is Hutch. And I'm Mr. Sark. Coming at you guys with another episode of uh, Respawn Inbox. And uh, just as a quick reminder, though, we had a video go up on Tuesday. It's another episode of Hello, My Name is Scene Anners, where he's playing uh, Monday Night Combat, kind of giving you guys some tips uh, and tricks on how to do well in that game. And I'm not sure that we are starting this off right, because you're starting it off like it's 2011. But it's... It's 2011. It's 2019. Not 2019, this guy says. Yeah, well, next thing you're going to tell me that, that fat fuck APL Fisher is going to be replacing me. Or, or, or Donald Trump's going to be president. It's 2019. Or Machinima, the largest gaming media company in the history of the planet, is going to fail and dissolve. And, and there's going to be self-driving cars. And, 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 I mean, where do you get off? Two thousand nineteen. Like, why would you even? Why would you even say that? Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm in Austin. It was my my girlfriend's birthday gift to me to come out and uh, visit you, you and Nanners and chill. Uh, what a princely gift! It's, it's a great gift. Man. Uh, but I figured while we were here, we could just do like a, a throwback inbox yeah. episode. You know, it's almost been ten years exactly since the inception. So when you when you came out to do that one v one with me, mm -hmm. that was right around birthday time. No, that was in February of uh, two thousand nine. Yeah. But I'm thinking of when Machinima started posting uh, Call of Duty uh, game, uh, gameplays yes. on the 2008. main channel. Two thousand eight. And then I think they made Respawn in December of two thousand and nine. I think. Yep. Yep. I came in in November. Yeah, to start it up. Yep. Yeah. So that's and. Where there's the Mega Man poster. I saved it, can framed I, it. I think they can only see like the feet. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. You, the, 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 OG, the OG viewers will remember what he's talking about with that one. That's right. It was in the background of basically every respawn for years. Along with yeah. a, a Bioshock poster. But um, So I picked 18 questions. I don't know if I'm going to use every single question, but let's just uh, jump in. Get right into it. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Ethan G. Wright asks to both of us, how does it feel to be past your prime? Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's, life, life's good. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, Every okay. year that goes by is better, <laughs> Ethan. So, thanks, yeah, thanks. I don't know how you define prime, but thanks for being past it. Mm -hmm. But we're fucking rocking. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. I just shot snot out of my neck. <laughs> this one is from Chilled Chaos, who asks, What's it like being 10 years older? Uh, biggest surprise in gaming from the last 10 years? I'm uh, sensing a trend here on our on our 10 year anniversary episode of Inbox. Uh 10 years older. I'll, I'll, I'll just stick to my answer, man. It just life is kick ass. Love it. You're the family man now. You got two two kids. You've you've, you've lived in two different spots. Yep. You got a new spot here in, in near Austin. And um... every year, I can look back at the date a year before and think, "What a fucking idiot." That's what I think. Explain. One year. That's all it takes. <laughs> that's how much. I, that's how, that's the rate of evolution that I'm going through. I kind of empathize with that, I think. Yeah? Uh, yeah. I, th I think, like, I don't know, like, ten years ago, there was, like, a lot of imposter syndrome going on, okay. where, where it all kind of happened very quickly, uh, and there was always this really loud voice that was screaming that I was totally out of place. Yeah, Tobuscus. <laughs> yeah, literally, Tobuscus was screaming in my ear that I didn't, <laughs> didn't deserve to be a part of the YouTube scene. <laughs> Uh, but that that voice kind of gets quieter, each yeah. year, you know, and then like you get more stability. I don't. I feel like I'm a totally different person in many respects. I agree. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's been good. I would it, say it's good. It's like if you charted the graph of of fucks given versus like uh, level of drama, it is correlated. Like yes. the lines yeah. crossed a while ago, and now it's like yeah, I just make the bids. I want to make, do the thing, play what I want to play. Yeah. Do you remember how much time I would spend on Twitter just completely engulfed in in YouTube drama? Mm, like yeah, yeah. Every bit of YouTube drama that popped up. I, I do remember. I always, 
Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> you would sit behind me, so you were literally like watching. Yeah, I remember as... you deleting your Twitter account and saying you're done. And... and about six months later, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> oh wait, we didn't get the second one. Oh, biggest surprise in gaming from the last ten years. Chilled snuck in a, a dual question. We'll let it slide. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, crossplay. I never thought that I would live to see a day where somebody could play the same game on PS4 mm. at the same time with someone on Xbox and PC yeah. and, and the Switch. You know, like I never, never thought that I would see that. Hutch uh, playing with a mouse and keyboard. That's my biggest surprise in all of gaming. It took years mm -hmm. to not be terrible. And now all we hear about is uh, my fucking aim. My aim's so sharp now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you played Fortnite for fucking 15 minutes and now you're fucking god, I get it. Okay. Alex Dixon comes in hot. He just says, with perfect punctuation, oh god, I'm gonna come. That's awesome, Alex. Yeah. Good for you. No period, no exclamation point though at the end, so I guess that's a knock, but that makes it does it, ma it makes it sound like it's very authentic blase to me like oh like maybe he's done this before he's come just from thinking about you and me. <laughs> right maybe like 15 minutes prior to tweeting this to us yeah <laughs> oh god i'm gonna come right i took it as like a like a like he's saying it fast because oh, oh right. god i'm gonna come <laughs> <laughs> yeah desperate <laughs> desperate <right. laughs> Do you want to get the... Oh, God! Yeah, okay. You can do that next Okay, time. next one. Uh, Ethan Eichelberg. Ethan Eichelberger. Willy Wonka's, like, foreman. Ah, well, this is Ethan Eichelberger. <laughs> He's in charge of the blueberry mix. <laughs> I don't know why he's Swedish. <laughs> uh, if you could go back ten years and tell your past self one thing, what would it be? Oh, shit, Ethan. <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, kind of like tying into what I said before, I would say like, you belong here. You, you're, this is where you're supposed to be. Mm. Something like that. If you're looking for That's something good. more profound. Something kind of, positive, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I hate that this is the first thing that came to mind, but I'm just gonna go with it. Uh, my thought, if I could hop in the time machine and go back, I would be like, fucking quit machinima. <laughs> and do this on your own. <laughs> Quit it. Go YouTube on your own. You'll be rich. You fucking idiot. <laughs> and don't sign up with Machinima. D just, just like go with like Maker or something. <sighs> that sucks, but. I'm gonna fix the camera. Yeah. Something along those lines. I've had that conversation with myself in a mirror more than once. I'm not gonna lie. I don't regret Machinima. Person. No, no, no. I don't either. And and it was actually like friendships were formed. That was like the, literally like our our trenches, right? But maybe like the last. I would years. be. I would be in a whole different. Uh, uh, dude, quitting the shaman would have been like rubbing the genie's lantern. It, I think it, I think it would. It, it was kind of the opposite for me because I got so much from working there. I didn't know anything about production before I got there, mm. um, and so I got a lot of valuable experience from that. Yeah, you, I loved it. You fucked up. <laughs> I loved it, but I, I stayed. A, I, I stayed a little longer than I should have. I, I rode that that motherfucker into the ground. Let me just tell you a little behind the scenes machinima story about this guy. There was a point in time, some of you may remember, where Nanners and Hutch bailed. They abandoned ship. That's And we make jokes about me being betrayed by that, but you don't know how many hours. There was a point where I was spending nearly 40 of my 40 hours at, at Machinima a week just trying to extract them from this nightmare. <laughs> Because Machinima oh, yeah, wanted yeah, yeah. to own their channels, and they were like, you're going to have to start new channels, and we own your identity, we own you. Um, and I tried for so long and so hard to get everybody out and to have it be um, something that was good for you. And there was a meeting we had with some bosses, and I told Hutch, I'm like, I've got everything lined up. 
They're ready to let you go, give you your channel. Maybe they'll make you come in and do some shit every now and then, whatever. Just all you have to do, Hutch, don't talk. Don't say anything. I've got this all set up. I'll do the talking. You just sit there, smile, nod, look stern, whatever. Look morose. Just play it by ear. Just don't fucking say anything. We get in there, they're like, all right, well, thank you guys for agreeing to this meeting. And we thought a lot about this and uh, we're, you know, agreeable to the, you know, the ideas that you proposed. But we would just like to say that we would love to have you, um, you know, stay on in some capacity uh, and, you know, maintain your salary and, and Hutch is like, I mean, I'm, I'm f flexible. We can discuss this. And I'm like, I don't remember that. Yeah. You fucking talked. I don't remember And you remember set that. me back weeks. You didn't get out. You stayed in Machinima. You were bummed. Oh, God. I don't Could've remember that. Slapped you. Wow. Yeah. See, now it's, fu now it's funny because, like, I, th I knew that at the time that you had mine and Adam's best interest in, in mind, mm -hmm. but I still got my feelings hurt because I thought that you didn't want me to be there. <laughs> and it fucking bummed me out. But yeah. I wasn't, but I, but I, that was like a whirlwind time for me and I was not, th I couldn't think straight about like anything. I also anything. didn't want him to be there. So, there's, that's valid. And I'm being totally honest. He was such a depressed, miserable sack of shit. I wanted him gone. Because he would then not be depressed and miserable. It was for you. Sometimes you hurt the ones you love, dude. You, you have an interesting way of expressing this. <laughs> Get the fuck out and feel better, you bitch! <laughs> Leon fucking Green wants to ask, what changes in video game content creation have you noticed over your time in the business? Anything specific that worries you or, or you see as a positive? I thought that was a good question. Yeah, you picked this one, you picked a real solid one. Yeah. So, like, what's changed? Changes in content creation. Yeah, being like a YouTuber streamer. Are we worried? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, streaming has blown up since uh, you know the the days that we were yeah. roaming the halls of the show. It was definitely a thing back then, but like a huge streamer in 2011 would have been like two, three thousand views or something like that viewers. And now like, huge. that's huge. That was like a monster that is like, streamer back then. That's like Justin TV and you stream, right? Like we streamed our 24 hour Black Ops. On you stream. On you stream. Yeah. yeah. And that was 24, like nowadays, you know, 24 hour streams are somewhat common, but it's still a big deal when the streamer you like is doing it. We streamed, so we streamed that 24 hours a day for a month. <laughs> On you stream. We, we didn't expect it to take a month, but we didn't prepare for the fact that a lot of the people that had shifts play. Yeah. It was first to 15th Prestige. That was the first thing. They upped it to 15 Prestiges. And we were trying to do first to max Prestige. But a lot of the Machinima employees. That's a little not, shaky. A little shaky on the sticks. That was pretty trash. Uh, uh, and it took like. And then we, we I think we kept getting DDoSed at one point. And so it took us like past Thanksgiving. Right. I think I think there were like few a few people that stayed behind that didn't have any family Thanksgiving plans. Yeah. And they manned the sticks for like the whole. Oh, we put and we put them in front of the TV with no problem too. It's like, yeah. <clears throat> so we got to go see our family. So <laughs> you mind staying here and grinding out? So yeah, like, like st streaming bec becoming like a big part of the the industry is definitely definitely one of the big the big things but the thing that i would say that's changed the most is that youtubing and 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 being an influencer for lack of a better word mm. uh and the sort of content that they make is starting to become or it has started to become more and more like television uh to me there's a lot more sponsored content there's a lot more uh, uh emphasis on being brand safe Yep. Um, and so it's it's to me it's starting to become kind of indistinguishable. I mean, it's it's going to be. I think it's always going to be more irreverent and uh, and and obscene than yeah. like television. But um, but it's starting to it, it just as like the framework of it is starting to really resemble television. Does that double as a worry for you? It is a worry. It's yeah. not. It's not like a, I mean, 
like I contribute to you know because I like I take sponsored deals and stuff and it's it's hard if you want to do it for a job you kind of kind of have to do that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, but you don't have to. You can do sponsored deals and not uh, lose your edge. Totally. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on who's sponsoring you. But it, then, then I mean, it, it does on, depend on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it may affect future um, partnerships, but that's why you stay true to your yourself, and then you build relationships with people that are down to work. Yeah. In parallel with you. Yeah. Definitely. Next question comes from Freddy Seven. Why does he like APL more than you, Hutch? Oh, so why do I? Okay, yeah. And he's asking you that, so that's interesting. Uh, Sark likes APL more than me because APL. <laughs> I don't. Uh, um. APL was uh, <laughs> APL was uh, a lot, I think, hungrier than I was when he when he picked up when, oh, yeah. after I left off. And he, he was, was way he's a, he was way hungrier then too. Yeah, clearly. Like, but but also very just naturally funny too. Yeah, because uh, he he had like there was like probably at least 120 extra pounds on him in 2011. I mean. Dude, vending machines where it was like, is there a raccoon in the office? Why does the vending machine have claw marks on the outside? No, there was like a there was like a there was like a thing for a while in the comments where where like some rabid respawn fans were just furious with mm -hmm. APL yep. for stepping in. Yeah. And a lot of people I think thought that that, that there was legitimate like beef between us because right. of that. It's just the strangest things. I mean, I think most people probably understood that that wasn't the case, but that's because some people, some people's reality is what is on the screen. That's oh. fucked up, by the way. If this is applying to you at all, then check yourself. Holy shit! Come on, guys. Yeah. Step your. But shit they up. they just see you vanish, and APL comes in, and now I, like there's a mailroom set, and there's like butcher's aprons for some reason <laughs> and they're like what the, the, the green visors <laughs> no, yeah, but but i thought that he did so fucking well like yeah. stepping into that he did not look nervous like you guys had really good uh chemistry you played off each other really well yeah like the whole time and there i've actually noticed a bunch of people in the in the in the um comments and tweets that give you guys like the proper props because of all the polish that respawn had right at that point because it was very unpolished before, and then it turned into this really... Yeah, I wanted it a little more structured. Yeah. A lot of people don't, I've mentioned this before here and there, but a lot of people don't don't realize that Inbox is not specifically Inbox, but I would say everything that we did was not received <laughs> as it is now. Then, it was like... Oh man, yeah. We would get roasted. APL was nuked. For uh, the the, I would say at least the first half of his inbox. Too. Yeah, but you guys became uh, like a cult classic, though. It's like yeah, once yeah. once everything was canceled, people it's like yeah, know. we would get like thirty thousand views on a video, which was you know that's okay, I guess it's not nothing insane being on like at the time respawn or a machinima you know side channel, but but what but now those those videos will they until they were deleted by the. Powers that uh, Yeah, the corporate overlords. Uh, those videos had like 600,000 views, 2 yeah. million views. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, but, but but then you also have to wonder too, because Machinima Respawn had this crazy policy of uploading 30 videos a day for a long time. So you have to you have to wonder, I mean, they like the content that we were the most proud of would just get buried. After yeah, while, well, and so that's that was part of my struggle in the end was trying to set our stuff on the side channel that Machinima Team Respawn. Um, and by the time that by the time I finally got that in place and had all the, dude, you don't even know how hard it was to get a gaming PC for APL and I to record gameplay on. I was I was like, do we? We need to be doing what all the like people that we're helping on YouTube do. We need to be making our own content. 
Um, and and got, it just got, was like you got pushed back on just getting up. Just to like every dollar was like. <laughs> wasn't like that in the beginning though. I felt like we had kind of a budget in the beginning to go out and blow money. Yeah. Wasn't like that at the end. No. Oh, okay. No, because no. no, Machinima, I mean, Machinima started drying up well before it finally, its desiccated corpse just like <laughs> collapsed into a small pile of dust. The cracks were starting to show as early as probably like 2011. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the, the the short answer is uh, because APL is better, Freddie. Yeah. Uh, Donovan wants to ask, how do you how do you feel knowing I started watching your vids when I was 11, and I'm now 22? Is that as surreal for you as it is for me? Dude, check out the lens flare on my eye. Dude, look at that. What is that? Is that a lens flare? <laughs> <laughs> You look like a replicant or something like that. Yeah. Give me the void comp test, dude. Just ask me some questions. With uh, cells interlinked within cells interlinked within cells interlinked with a single stem. Is this testing if I'm a replicant or if I'm a lesbian, Decker? <laughs> <laughs> Blade Runner 2049 is one of my favorite movies yeah, of, yeah, of yeah. the last I, I 10 years. I've heard you wax poetic about you it. You didn't love it? I, I really liked it. Why, why didn't you love it? I thought the plot was a little too convoluted. I thought I thought there was wrinkles in there where, like, if you go back and like the plan to conceal the kid, I was like weak. You have to be a a, a man of, of of a particular amount of culture and sophistication oh, okay. to appreciate Denis Villeneuve uh, films. Right. <laughs> so I get it. I get your stance. But. Right. Uh, but what was the question? Usually I love Din Denny. Denny's. Denny's was one of my favorites. D Dune. Dude, what if Denny directed a Denny. Denny's commercial? <laughs> <laughs> How epic would like Moons Over My Hammy look? Like, whoa. <laughs>
Did you watch Sense8 on Netflix? Uh, no, not yet. That that will challenge you, I think. Why? Because, because it's weird. It's okay. it's and it's very unapologetic. Like they're just. I don't mind weird. I just don't like their uh, their lack of restraint. It's like it's like Tolkien wrote all his books. But in the background, he had, like, the Silmarillion and texts of history and all the languages and all that. But that's not all in Lord of the Rings. That was all to provide depth yeah. for Lord of the Rings. The Wachowskis don't do that. They write their Silmarillion. They write all their texts and languages. And then they just fucking jam it into the movie. How can we... 90 minutes. Ah, fuck, two hours. Two and a half. We're good at two and a half hours. 2.45, maybe. And then, and then you have a Jupiter ascending where you're like, <laughs> every 15 minutes you've like been uh, like clockwork orange, a full feature movie. They're like, mm -hmm, she's queen of the bees. Mm -hmm, oh, he's a dog. I love dogs. Mm -hmm, oh, we bathe in the milk of the, the, the youth. <laughs> this is what it looks like when I watch Jupiter ascending. <laughs> and I could, and I also just couldn't get past uh, Channing Tatum's blonde goatee. That was, that, was, <laughs> yeah, that was tough for me. I thought his air roller blades were fucking sick, though. Leon X. So is Sark going to start streaming more? Or... Uh, what do you think? Should I, should I go over to Twitch? You should I stream on Twitch? You've been talking about it for years. Yeah. You tell me, right now, what, what do you think I should do? If you started to stream regularly on Twitch, I think you would have a very solid dedicated group of viewers would i make skrill though yeah because that's what i that's all i care about is that i i, I, I think you know I, know what I, mean? I think you would should i cut a deal with mixer uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna start streaming okay yeah so here's the i don't know when this is going up uh we're at the midpoint of August right now. Next, I don't know if you want Friday. to timestamp next Friday. Okay. Um, so I'm in the middle of you of of sorting my shit out a bit. Not that you know. It, I'm I'm uh, getting some things squared away because YouTube is not uh, what it used to be, and so I need I need to expand. I need to broaden the the horizons a bit. So right now I'm in the middle of a month where I'm going to get a lot of the vids that I have not been able to cut yet that have been in the queue. I'm just gonna like, I'm just plowing through them. I'm gonna see how that month looks and based on like that month, I'm gonna then figure out what time I can set aside to do some streaming in addition to maintaining, you know, cutting the YouTube vids. But yeah, I'm gonna shoehorn it in. YouTube is tough to do for like 10 years you know yeah. that is tough yeah and I, in many ways even though i think more time goes into twitch uh well depending on how long you stream right oh, and how and, long it takes to cut your videos and how god tier a youtuber you are yeah uh but but for me that was the case where more hours go into twitch but i have way more energy afterwards like right. just all the, the trying to plot out like a like a schedule of videos and, and trying to think of like creative and fun ideas is just so hard for me to do for like years and years and yeah years. it's tough my thing is it just takes so long to edit yeah and i watch you and then i watch you guys playing games uh like while a video is rendering or while it's frozen trying to like deal with a tough transition or whatever and i'll put on twitch and i'll be like oh god they're playing all these new games. It looks so fun. This is a, this is like the golden age of gaming too. There's like so many good games coming out all the time. Though. Clyde wants to ask. Um, this is a good one. What would you have done if you were running Machinima back in the day? Um, dude, what would I have done? I think it's easier to say what what you wouldn't have done. You know what I mean? Like it's easier to point to the 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 mistakes be like i yeah. wouldn't have done that but i think something that i would have done personally would have been to to if, if i was in charge of the whole thing would would be to do a better job of defining what machinima was because mm -hmm. it was very 
nebulous back then. Yeah. Um, and, and it all kind of felt like the different sort of offshoots of machinima or the different like branches of machinima, they all felt kind of disconnected from one another. And, and it kind of, it was difficult to sort of like take a top down view. Like if I was looking to invest in a company like Machinima or if I was a viewer looking to invest uh, like personally or emotionally into, into that brand, it would have been hard to, to, to describe what the brand was. Because if you would have asked a Realm viewer what Machinima was, their answer would have been totally different than if you would have asked the Respawn viewer. Yep. So I would have found a way to make it a little, a lot more cohesive, yeah. I think is what I would have done. It kind of it kind of depends, because there's a point where I would have made creative decisions to make Machinima more, um, yeah, have more of an identity, like you're saying. Yeah. But then there's a there's a point beyond which I would have just like given myself a raise and then sold the fucker. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the only thing you can do at some point. Because yeah. there was a point where it was like, dude, this is really, this is like really cool. Yeah. And then there was like, this is a dump, an eternal dumpster fire that can never be extinguished. And it was uh, just like one bad decision just cascading into just yeah, like yeah. a series of bad. It's decisions. a dumpster fire, a raging dumpster fire that you're swatting at with a hand towel. Stop it. Like ranging from small mistakes, like giving the pre premier director spot to Doc instead of Mr. Phantasmo, right. and then running all the way up to like 30 videos a day on, on the Respawn channel. There was just so many like mistakes that were made and it was very frustrating, I think, for both of us because we had no control over many. We did have, Wait, wait, wait. We giving had, it to had, Doc was a mistake? Well, yeah. It was. It was we also should never just should have had that program at all. <laughs> that's, so. another, that's another view of it, yeah. Uh, yeah, what a fucking joke. Oh, there's so many things. Also, the contracts. I would have made... I would have made the contracts even more draconian. <laughs> like, I would... <laughs> from the outright. Dude, don't go, If you're gonna be that insanely evil, don't go half-ass. Make them pledge their firstborn child if they don't. Dude, if they you, don't I'd have it. Rishi out there grooming like seven year olds <laughs> and trying to get them to sign the shit on the sly and to. It would be like, was that Oliver Twist with all the little kid, the, the kid robbers? <laughs> I forget what the boss robber was, but he'd be the. That's what showed him up. And yeah. then I'd have everyone out there just. Yeah, yeah, go be your Sign this thing that says we own your house. Yeah. Com commit to the pure evil of it. Yeah. Yeah. Birchie wants to ask, if Sark could fight any human living or dead, who would it be? Oh, a little Fight Club nod. Um, any human living or dead. <sighs> um, I would fight Nixon. Yeah? Yeah. I don't think I could take him. He was like six foot... That dude was built like a brick house, he's, actually. Yeah, he seemed pretty tough. He's a tall, menacing man. But I would fight, I would want to fight him. I would train for it for like nine months. Nine months to a year. Maybe two years. And a serious man. diet regimen to bulk up. I would fight Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would go back. Because how different would the history books be if it was like... Oh, Jesus, he fed everyone fish and yeah, but he got his ass kicked by Sark. <laughs> yeah, then some dude ran up and just beat his ass. Just cold clocked him. Yeah, and then pulled a knife from the future. And the, the apostles were like, Death thou let us go of our Lord. And I'm like, Because they speak Shakespearean English. Right. And, and then, then I'm like, Stand back! I fucking got you! Jesus is mine! Or maybe that's not how I'd go. Maybe that's just how I'm envisioning it. Maybe I'd be like, hey, Jesus, time to pay the piper. And he'd be like, hit you with a falcon like <laughs> yeah, shuriken. The, the god punch. Mm -hmm. The savior. <laughs> uh, Martin Kelgren asks, how has parenthood affected the severity of Sark's Vietnam flashbacks? Or have they decreased, or have they... No. Have they... We talked about this briefly when we played uh, Rising Storm. Mm -hmm. um, they are on a... 
like parabolic increase. Because yeah. now you have something that you're afraid It just of feels like, every, yeah, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Do you tell Also, them? you just feel sometimes intense love for them, like your brothers in arms, and sometimes just intense hatred, mm -hmm. like the man in the black pajamas, mm -hmm. you know? Like Atlas will crawl out of like his little pillow cave and I'll be like... <sighs> Indistinguishable from uh, Charlie Carr yeah, falling you out gotta, of the fox hole. You gotta, you gotta be like, Thunder, and I'll be like lightning. Yeah, so that was a World War II, but you know, I did that too. So yeah, I brought all that shit into Vietnam. <laughs> all my experience, all my wars, <laughs> came to bear in Vietnam. You're like Logan. You fought <laughs> in every theater of war for like the last two centuries. <laughs> Somebody put my face into like the Logan flashbacks. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. No. 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 They've only augmented them, Martin. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. I've nearly, I've nearly like killed Aurora several times. Yeah, that's heavy. Dumb little bitch. <laughs> There's no way. Need tablet says no question. Just wanted to say thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. That's refreshing. All right. Yeah, you are welcome. Uh, Shady Ginger wants to ask, if you had to throw one of your kids off of a cliff, which would it be? Shams are an option? What the fuck is he talking about with the last part? Like all Sham, Sham doesn't will... have any children. I would, if, I, if Sham is an option, I would throw Sham off of a cliff. Oh, instead I, of my kid. I don't, I don't have any kids, so I'd have to throw him off a cliff. Right. But okay. if you could throw all Sham no wow. <laughs> I mean, Atlas. Sham is a great friend, but he's not my kid. Yeah. So, he's going over. He's got to go. But, yeah. But it was really good knowing him. Super yeah. nice guy. Really nice. Just the best. And it, that's just based purely on the concept of, you know, I reject your hypothesis. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'd throw Sham off a cliff. Jared could... Oh, Jared. I'm so sorry. I know it's Kaczynski, but the K you see in the, the first syllable is... Kaczynski. Yeah. His name is Kaczynski. Oh. But I mean, phonetically, it looks like cuck is the... Right? Yeah. I don't think that. I'm just saying. Hey, look, this is coming from a Robinson. I think that... Oh, K Robinson? No, Robinson. There's no N in the middle. Oh, Robinson? No, fucking Robinson. It's not my fault my forebears didn't, you know, spell their shit out for the Ellis Island. I don't know where my immigrant... Answer. We'll just yeah. assume Ellis Island. That's a sad thing. Jared Kaczynski. I think K-U-C would be more like Cuke. Cuke. Instead oh, of okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. That's not bad. Because I you say Cuke and I think Cucumber. Yeah. Which reminds me of a cock. So, we're right back where we started. <laughs> Is Sark the real love of your life or Esme? See, now this one's a tough question because that night in Cologne, I'll never forget you taught me what the male orgasm was. You taught me about nipple stimulation. Uh, you taught me about docking. Those are lessons I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life. And no, no, that, no. that benefit you... To this day. Yeah. Yeah. With Esme. Yeah. And benefit her. In, in, in more ways than one. Right. Yeah. But she... Uh, fucking does so much shit for me. She, she helps me with my taxes. Yeah. She helps me with my business emails. She helps me with broad strategy. She uh, laughs at my jokes. I gotta go with Esme, and it's not a slight at you. So I just want you to know that I thank you for teaching me the depths of my own ass. That's a little, yeah, yeah. Because, because I guarantee you she doesn't plunge you out like I did. I mean, who could? Right. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. You are, yeah. Your farts sounded like a kazoo for like three weeks. Because there's just no, there's nothing blocking the passage of air. <laughs> that, that actually like made me sweat a little because it's so gross. Okay, so, so, what is this? Oh, you're doing the thing. Yeah, look at, how, how close can I get to it? Oh, it's not, it's a mark on the phone. Is now it? I'm just winking like a perv. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, to, for you guys, I, there's a little thing that looks shiny. Do you, do you ever get um, like a like a like a, a 
like a spherical kind of distortion in your vision sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. I think we got that from staring at the sun that one time. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't last very long, but, but sometimes- I hadn't thought of that, but- It's in my right eye specifically, but I can, and I can see it now if I kind of squint. It's like a little sphere that's like distorted. Dude, I can't believe we did that. Yeah. One. Oh, I don't want to do it. It's so counter counterintuitive. All right, one, two, three. Oh God! <laughs> We good. only lasted a moment, but it's like... Like half second. It was overwhelming. <laughs> Go figure! <laughs> okay, so this is, the, this is the last question from okay. John Furious. Okay. Which is a good name. It Very is strong pretty name. badass, yeah. Uh, what was your most embarrassing moment with Sark in a skit or otherwise? And I guess I would posit the same question to you. Right. Because, but you don't get embarrassed. You're not, you're incapable of shame. <laughs> I think that question does apply to you. Um, I'm trying to just think of a, a time I've been embarrassed. Uh, while you think of yours. Uh, it's, this is gonna sound stupid, but, um, and, and, and it's gonna sound kind of anticlimactic, but there was the, the first year that we went to E3. Okay. Um, and it was the first gaming convention I'd ever been to. And you, we were filming on the show floor, and we, we happened upon a bunch of people that were dressed in Halo cosplay, okay. I think. One, I remember specifically one, one girl looked uh, like Cortana. And you wanted us to get in the middle of all them and dance. I totally remember this, and, yeah. And I, I have, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you know this about me, maybe some viewers do, I have an irrational fear of dancing. I'm not kidding. Okay. Like if I'm if I'm at a wedding, and I'm in the wedding party and I'm expected to dance, it horrifies me for some reason. And I was so uncomfortable doing that, but I did it anyways, and I didn't complain because I was hungry. Like APL right. 2012. Hungry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but but I remember like what watching the video back and being very frightened that I looked crazy. And it was in there just for moments of B-roll. It was a, like, like a literally one second. Split second of B-roll. <laughs> but I remember I kind of did this kind of like, like Running Man kind of dance. <laughs> I don't even know what it was. That's right. Oh, I remember that. I'm yeah, and they were all, it was Halo Reach cosplayers. Yeah, and yeah. they were all dancing with us. And yeah. it was, it was, everyone was having a good time, almost. Uh, do, do you have any, what about the time that you and and Kale uh, interviewed Sally Field. No, I wasn't. I wasn't embarrassed. <laughs> that was amazing, though. That was so good. She fucking hated us. Oh, man. And, uh, well, well, you know what? She was incorrect. Yeah, we were doing okay. Yeah, we did like a, I was doing a red, this was post Machinima, so I was. <laughs> It was for, was it Amazing Spider-Man 1, I believe? One of the two. With Garfield Might, as... have, might have been two? I don't know. Two came did, out did... in 2014. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it was, it was the other one. Okay. Uh, it, it was not the one with... Um, Toby the Water. Uh, well, the one with Itsy Bitsy Spider being played on the collapsing electrical Jamie Foxx. It was not Jamie Foxx. Was that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's part two. With like the dubstep fight fight sequence. God, I didn't watch that movie. I hadn't seen it until maybe a few months ago, and then I was like, my mind was blown. I had no idea it was that bad. They they made some bold decisions with it. <laughs> Speed Spider, Spider. Dude, that movie sucked. No, so we were interviewing. We were doing red carpet interviews with everybody. I hate doing those. Uh, just. Period. I don't like doing it. Kale's a champ, though. Yeah. He does a good job of it. But um, he never looks nervous when he's doing it. Either. No, and he's gotten better and better um, over time. But we were doing a, like the bit going into it was that he was QB one and I was his uh, um, his foil. His, his QB one. Yeah, he was like he was the alpha. I was the beta oh. in our little duo. And yeah. So. So our bit was very broadly, and we didn't like go too hard on this, but it was that I was kind of excited to be there, and he had done this a million times. So every now and then I'd be like infectiously excited, and 
we had like a, a bit of banter before the interview and she goes, <laughs> I forget what she said, but it was something to the effect of like, are you guys just gonna interview each other or are we gonna do this? <laughs> <laughs> and it was live. She was not having it she at all. <clears throat> Didn't want any, any... Yeah, she had places to be, but... Also, like... Go fuck, fuck yourself, you. Sally Field. <laughs> you know, there. I, I remember... And this is probably a product of stress. I remember being... I don't know if it's embarrassed, but just stressed out of my mind. And that generated feelings of panic. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of in the vicinity of embarrassment. I don't, of. I don't know anything about but that is, uh, <laughs> uh, it was doing the IGAs, um, hosting the IGAs. Wait, was that or, the year that we came back and, and did a little cameo? It was the year, specifically the one that I, I would host like the pre-show for the IGAs, which was like Inside Gaming Awards, the uh, annual best of show for Machinima, the, the Inside Gaming guys put on mm -hmm. but I would do the pre-show then the show would happen and then it would come back to me usually as some like some wrap-up stuff but mm -hmm. it involved a lot of winging it on my part and and there was and you were in the throes of all that stress at the time yes that's like my nightmare but you didn't but you pulled it off like super well well and they time. would be like you know the guy behind the camera uh like our buddy Rob Rob yeah. T he would be like he would just do this and that meant stretch that meant we don't have anything for you okay. and we don't have anything to cut to it's just you we're live go and then i would just go and usually like on like on x play i didn't do tons of on camera stuff because i was a nervous wreck on x play oh i have one on x play i'll show you in a minute but i would have to stretch for like it would be like 20 minutes <laughs> with nothing to cut to that's that's my, that's my literal nightmare, man. It makes me, it gives me anxiety right now. And then, it gives me anxiety. in desperation, I remember at that one, it was the one where Porter Robinson was spinning. Yeah, that was 2012. So, no. yeah, 2012. In yeah. desperation, they brought up a dev, and I won't say who it is, because I'm sure there's video out there that you can find it. But this Lancer dev. Schmippy C. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> they, uh,. This dev was fucking hammered, and it was nowhere near as funny as the dude at E3 or at, at talking to Keeley, the the No Escape guy oh, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It was nowhere as near as funny as that. He was just sloppy drunk and like ta telling me personal shit and all this, and I'm like, dude, I'd rather just improv. Just fucking why? Like you went from this, which is bad, to this, which is worse, and it was just me winging. And then I'm just thinking, like, God, there's another 45 minutes to go before the show starts. Anyway, I don't know if that's embarrassment. Embarrassing on X Play though. Pr prior to Machinima, I worked at a at a network TV net cable network called G4 on a show called X Play and some other shit. It was a video game review show, and they brought me in to do. They brought me in as a PA, like a grunt, like go get. Sessler beef jerky and, and whatever Morgan Webb wants. Um, the shit detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is fine. That was like, I, that was what I was hired to do, and that's what I'm going to do. And they were super cool. Paying them dues. But I pitched a segment that ended up uh, that I thought they would uh, be in front of, and I would just be writing and producing like all the segments were. And the executive producer was like, uh, the audience won't buy them doing it. You do it. So then I ended up on camera doing these viewer challenges. Now I was, that was like really, it, that was my experience, experience equivalent to you coming to Machinima. Oh, where yeah. it's like, dude, all of a sudden I'm in front of a three camera TV setup yeah. and the lights and there's like 30 people that don't give a shit or give a lot of shit, yeah. right? And and they're in the dark behind, and just just terrifying. And I don't know which camera's going, and and they're. <laughs> Is that the one where you were doing like you were dressed up like in overalls or something like that? And, and there was some skit that you did where you were. Uh no, it wasn't the skit. This was I would go on there. They would dress me up in douchey wardrobe, 
shirts, like diesel shirts and shit, and be like, you look great, and go out there, and I'd have like these weird, oddly bleached jeans. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they'd go out and they'd be like, talk to Sessler, tell him about the, 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 the viewer challenge. And so I'd be talking to him, and also to add into this, there's teleprompters, right? That's a whole other talent. That's a, that's a, sk a honed skill that you have to learn how to naturally read a teleprompter and not look like you're, yeah, exactly. And so I did, the, I did, well, I didn't do that. I didn't lean into it. I, I was talking to Sessler and then I knew I was supposed to turn and say something. And so I turned to the camera like this. Um, but there was so much, you don't understand, behind the camera there's so much. It's the other set for Attack of the Show. It's all these people. Yeah. And so my, I, I lost track of what I was even supposed to be focusing on. <laughs> and, and my eyes couldn't, like, they were focusing in and out on, like, the front of the camera, and then the teleprompter, and then the reflections in the teleprompter. So this is what it just looked like, is I just turned to him and I, and I, I just went like, Thanks, Adam. We had a lot of fun, and a lot of the people involved were just um, really friendly fans of the show. Oh no! <laughs> and nobody who could have, <laughs> nobody who could have called it, and that went to air. Me looking like a total fucking mongoloid. Dude, I um when the, the when um uh, when you guys That's would amazing. ask when you guys would ask me to interview devs. At first, I, I loved the idea oh, of it yeah, yeah. because when I first, when I first, before the YouTube thing, I used to watch like the one-up guys and, and like a lot of the one-up guys. And that's what I wanted to do. Like do sit down and do round table discussions for 45 minutes about yeah. fucking Brink or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and interview devs and kind of like get to, and I had no idea about like the, the, the politics behind gaming and the money influences and how structured and regimented everything is. And how the, the the handlers keep these devs on like a, a short leash, totally. and so they can't really get like too open about a lot of the stuff. And um, and there... add in to that all the production details, stress, cameras, yeah. getting your mic right. Don't don't stand like this and talk to them. You, you got to be open to them. And like, camera, yeah, yeah, and you got to talk to them while you're looking at the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the more, so the more I, like the first few times I interviewed devs, one of the first time was with Josh Olin, you remember that? In that like tiny cramped like room that was had like mm -hmm. a red light instead of a regular light. I think it was in Germany that I, uh, but I remember, I remember in that interview, I like blanked. Cause I had these like list of questions in my head that I wanted to ask him. And then I get like, he, he, and I was super nervous. And so he answered one question and I, and I was like, that's really interesting, Josh. <laughs> Already, <laughs> and that's like the and after just, effects of an explosion that happened three seconds ago. <laughs> and then I just froze, and I like I was like, oh, I had a question I wanted. To, I was like Chris Farley in the Chris Farley show, right? Like that right, right, right. But but I remember in in all the subsequent interviews that I did, I would have a physiological stress response where my neck would completely lock, and I couldn't turn my head, and so. <laughs> I would ask them a question and then I would cheat come back to camera like this. <laughs> and then and then I would start getting self-conscious about that and then the panic would really kick in and I could feel myself kind of right. shaking. Oh god, I'm Batmanning. Oh, <laughs> and I and I and I'm convinced that the person that I'm interviewing can see every thing that's right. happening within my body. Yeah. And then I'm just like in my head just man. It's yeah. just a downhill flat. <laughs> It was fucking brutal. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. But when I watched it back, you couldn't really tell. Like when I watched it back, like it, I was afraid that I looked like this, but when I would watch it back in the, in the edit, you couldn't really tell that much. And so then it made it easier. But man, I hated interviewing devs. Yeah. It, it was so uncomfortable for me. This is why I always gave Seacrest props. Yeah. And this is, I don't know what he's doing these days. He's probably like in jail for some Me Too I, thing. Or no, something. He, had a, he, had, he had a Me Too. Oh, he did? He did. Okay, so. Not in jail. Oh. But he did well, get Me Too. God damn him. Yeah. But anyway, speaking purely of his hosting abilities, I was always impressed by Seacrest. Mm -hmm. You would bring I'm that a up. poet. And I didn't realize it. You would bring that up and I would judge you for it. But then yeah. I started to understand what you were talking about. Yeah. Because he also had this podcast that he would do, a radio show that he would do at like 5 a.m. Every, oh, really? every morning. 
and then he would go out and do that. We're getting sidetracked. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. We should uh, we should wrap this, this up. This ended up being more like a podcast yeah. than an inbox, but like a radio. Hopefully, re- people. Yeah, more like a radio response. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's good to see you, man. Good it's to good, see you. Good to see you. Welcome you're... to Austin. You picked a beautiful time of year to come here. It's very hot. Just sweat cascading off of your ball sack. It's not too bad though. No. I, I I live in in a part of LA that gets pretty hot, so it's like ten degrees hotter than that. Yeah. Also, there's a thing called air conditioning that you know you can go find if you get too hot. So Warned everyone you. who warned me about the heat in Austin, go fuck yourself. Wonderful piece of technology. Yeah. I hear the railroads coming through any day now. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna be big for com- <laughs> commerce. But thank you for showing me your home. You guys didn't see, it, but off camera I was getting to know his daughter. Very talkative. That, yeah. that Aurora. Not something any parent wants to hear, by the way. Very Hutch is getting to know your daughter. I think I'm good with kids. I think so, de- too. To defend myself. Are you going to have kids? No, here's the thing. I don't want kids, but I'm, but I'm very happy when my friends have kids. Because then I get to, like, experience yeah. the kids stuff. And uh, I'm and just curious. I, I'm not... Uh, we we got to continue the species. Like some people, some people say it's morally wrong to have kids in 2019 because of all the shit that's going on out there. I think that's bullshit. You know, you got to continue the species. So somebody's got to do it. I'm happy that you're a parent. Working on it. You got delightful children. Yeah. Uh, You and Katie are doing great. I'm not going to lie though. I find parents to be intensely annoying a lot of times. Do you have to interact with a lot of them at the, uh, at the functions? Yeah. Yeah, A lot of them just want everyone around them to have kids so they can share the miserable parts of having kids. I'm like, God, what a bunch of mentally ill people you are. They just shoot the shit about all the bullshit that they have to do with Yeah, and they they shame their friends who are like, no, I'm not really into kids. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Have kids or don't. You know, whatever. I I mean, who the fuck knows, you know? I don't know. It was me and Mike wake up in a few years and really want a kid and then we would just have I thought you were going to say and be knocked up. (laughs) Surprise. No. But (laughs) but she might, you know, I don't know if she'll change her mind. We'll we'll figure it out. I don't know. Uh, But this was fun and uh it was kind of like i was like we haven't done this in so long so like i wasn't i wasn't worried when before getting here and i wasn't stressed or anything like that but i found myself like my head like oh i actually have to like think about this a little bit and Mm -hmm. prepare for it yeah a lot went into inbox yeah towards the end yeah especially yeah yeah uh so hopefully i can uh live up to the 2013 inbox with the edit for this. I gotta get I get I gotta get you to get me the music that you used. I don't know if that was royalty free music or if you had it. It was. I don't know if I have it because Wood cut all the yeah inboxes. So. But you don't remember. We'll figure that out later. Yeah. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Yeah. And uh, maybe be, we can be sure to follow us on Twitter. There, there you'll find the latest, latest updates about all of our contract new contracts. Slim trim. Get your parents' credit card ready and sign that shit now, children. Because Hutch and I are directly responsible for all of that. You want to get in while it's hot, guys. You want to think about your future long term. Yeah. We can help you. Don't you want to play games? Don't you want to play games? Don't you want to make money playing games? You guys don't like money? Prove your parents wrong. They don't love you. Get the credit card. Get the credit card, guys. You need that cash. Sign the paper. Thank you